Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for May 28th through June 3rd. This week I read two books, I watched one show, I watched four movies, and I listened to one book. It has definitely been a while since we've been in this room filming a weekly wrap-up. And even though I shouldn't have to, I do feel like I want to apologize for the fact that my hair is very, very wet. Usually I'd let it dry a little bit more before filming a video, but I've started this new thing where I start the day with a walk, and then I'm also going to go to a class pretty soon after filming this. So if I want to look presentable at all, I guess it's the wet hair look that we're going to go with. Also, I really like this shirt. It's new, and it's also very nice to be able to wear a shirt that's not one of the six shirts I've been wearing for the past three months. This one is a mashup of The Little Prince and Monty Python and the Holy Grail, and I think it's adorable and funny. I actually unboxed this earlier this week with a bunch of other bookish things, so if you want to see that video, I will link it in places. The first book that I finished this week is Our Own Little Underworld. This is a YA retelling of Hades and Persephone, where Hades' mother works at a funeral home, and Persephone's mother, as usual, is very, very overbearing. Up until the plot of this novel, she's actually been homeschooled, but she's allowed to go to high school for her last year. And she actually meets Hayden before she goes to school, but he kind of warns her off trying to be his friend because people at school don't really like him. Something happens that brings these characters together, and then it goes from there. This was a very sweet romance. I really enjoy how supportive these characters were towards each other, and I really enjoyed seeing how all of this played out. We even got to meet these lovely side characters along the way, and we got to see a lot of character growth through these characters, and I just very much appreciated it. The physical book that I read this week is the first book that I read for the Queer Lit Readathon, and that's A Song for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. This one is set in a distant future, and if I read one line correctly, I think it's also on a moon. and has to do a lot with the religion of this society, because our main character Dex is a monk. As we meet them, they've been doing one job for their monastery for a very long time, and they decide they need to change that job up, and they decide that they are going to do tea services. This is essentially taking a wagon from village to village, hearing people's problems and giving them tea that they think will help those problems. Along the way, they take a detour, and they actually end up meeting a robot, which humans haven't seen in a very, very long time, because at some point in the distant past, robots actually gained sentience and decided they didn't want to live in human society, they wanted to go off into the wilderness and be left alone. Now this robot has been tasked with checking in with humans and finding out what humans need, which is obviously a huge question that changes from person to person and moment to moment, so it's going to be a pretty big research project. This one has a lot to do with faith and self-worth and what is the whole point of living, and I believe that this is the first in a duology. I think it's only two books, I don't think there's going to be any more, and it's a novella, and I very much enjoyed it. I always enjoy Becky Chambers, but this was quite sweet. It took me a little while to get in. There's kind of a pre-chapter that was a lot to do with the scripture of the world, and I was like, if the entire book is this, I don't think I can read it. But then we got into the actual plot, and I was fine from there. The one show we watched was while Chad and I were still in Bucharest, we turned on the TV, managed to find a English-speaking channel, and watched a show that we had never seen before, but a bunch of episodes were on as we were having a couple of beers and falling asleep. Through some googling, because every time it went to a commercial it went into Romanian and I couldn't understand it, obviously, because I do not speak that language, but anyway, the show was called The Amazing World of Gumball. This is a Cartoon Network show, it apparently has a bunch of seasons, apparently it ended at some point, but it's obviously still showing reruns of it. And we found this pretty funny because it would get to ridiculous extremes, and I just remember really laughing at it and being like, oh, it's gonna do this, and then it would completely pivot, or we would be right, and either way that would amuse us. On our flight from London to Calgary, I watched two movies, the first one being Operation Fortune, Ruse de Guerre. This is an action flick, it's got Jason Statham, it has Hugh Grant, it has Aubrey Plaza, and all of that was wonderful. The whole Aubrey Plaza and Hugh Grant combination is why I actually picked it. And this is your usual action movie where there's spy things, and there's heists, and there's double crossing, and there's explosions, and all of those types of things, but it was also very funny and also very charming at points. It also had a trope that I'm coming to realize I kind of like, which is casting somebody to play a famous actor in the thing, and then seeing that person being kind of a fish out of water working with this team. If you like action movies, it's definitely worth watching. The second movie I watched, I saw most of because I kept falling asleep a little bit and then waking up and knowing I had missed things, but not knowing what I had missed, obviously, and that was Black Adam. This is definitely a movie I'm going to have to watch again. It's a superhero movie. This is on the DC side of things. It did seem 
seemed very, very fun, but at the point where I was trying to watch it on the plane was the point where they dimmed the cabin lights and shaded the windows, so they wanted you to have a nap, so I kept going, no, I will have my nap at the end of this. Once the credits roll, I am allowed to nap. And then as soon as the credits rolled, I was no longer feeling like I needed a nap. So I just missed random bits of this movie, and I don't know what I missed. What I saw, I found enjoyable, but obviously I was missing little bits here and there, so I can't really talk that much about it because I do not have a complete picture of what this was. Shortly after returning home, we watched two movies with our roommate, the first one being Renfield, which I thought was a wonderful choice because we had just come from Romania and Transylvania. If you're not aware of it, the main character of this is Renfield, as in the one that actually serves Dracula, and he comes to realize that he is in a toxic relationship with Dracula. He actually goes to support meetings and he's very conflicted about getting innocent people for his boss to eat, even though he has superpowers because of this whole arrangement. This was bloody and extreme and action-packed, and I ended up very much enjoying it. Also, Nicolas Cage was just ridiculous, and I loved it. The other movie we watched was Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves. We talked through the first little bit of this, so I'm sure that there are little bits that I didn't quite pick up because my roommate had already seen it before and then she realized that, you know, I actually wanted to know what was going on, so we talked through a bunch of it and then we actually watched a bunch of it, and it was very, very funny in points. There were definitely certain things that happened that were living rent-free in her head, so she was just like, you need to see this because I need to be able to reference it because it hasn't left my brain. Another bonus of watching this movie is one of the the writers is John Francis Daly, who you might know as Sweets from Bones. Yes, this is what he does for a living now. He writes movies, he directs movies, and I'm a fan of him in general. I, I know that he's a giant nerd, so a Dungeons & Dragons movie in his hands, great idea. And because I've played a little bit of this RPG in my time, I also enjoyed watching just how this unfolded. This is another movie that had Hugh Grant. The man is working a lot these days, and I am definitely okay with it. The audiobook I listened to this week is highly suspicious and unfairly cute. This is a dual perspective between this girl who is very, very driven, wants to become a lawyer, mostly so she can show up her dad who left the family about 10 years ago because he is a lawyer, and then this guy that she used to be friends with, but then he became popular and cool, and she kind of resents him for that because she's definitely always been not popular and not cool and is constantly getting shit from people at their school. He also wants to be a lawyer, but that's mostly because his father is also also a lawyer, and he's never really been able to tell his father that that's not something he's actually passionate about. He really wants to be a sci-fi writer, but he's never been able to finish a novel, so he feels like that's something he can't do, because you can't be a writer if you don't finish a novel. These two end up vying for the same scholarship, which means they actually have to work as a team at some point, which means they have to kind of draw a ceasefire to this bickering they've had for the past few years, and then they realize maybe there are other feelings involved. There's a soft spot in my heart for very guarded characters who have a reason to be very guarded and people that can break down those barriers and also just people talking about the practicality of feelings as though feelings are ever practical. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a Ko-fi account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that, as always, is down below. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!